Good morning. It's Friday, and we have a lot to talk about as we're plowing our way through the book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible. And the challenging part of this, as I prepare it, and as you read it, and this is what my goal is for all of us, that we will rightly divide the Word of God. As we've already seen, there's some commands that have nothing to do with us because remember, they weren't written to us. So let's just go over that quickly. When you see the promise or a command, you have to find out who is it made to, and then, all right, it was made to them. Sometimes it's to a person. God says, leave Abraham where you are, and I will bless you and make your name great. Is that promise for you? Did God ever say my name would be great on the earth? No. It wasn't made to me. It was made to Abraham. Sometimes a promise was made to a tribe of Israel. That's not for me. You just can't take that verse out unless there's something in the New Testament that reinforces it. You follow? Same thing with promises and commands. Who is the command made to? Wasn't made to me. I'm not a Hebrew leaving Egypt. This was for their nation. Now, if it's repeated in the New Testament or illustrated, then we can say, oh, that's the law of Christ for me, who is a Christian, should govern my life, not in order to become a Christian, but because I am a Christian. Comprende, no comprende. We follow? Now we're into nasty stuff today. We're going to talk about nasty things because it's, the Bible has nasty things to talk about here. We only have um, two verses to cover. 20, chapter 22, 19 and 20. Anyone who has sexual relations with an animal is to be put to death. Number two. Whoever sacrifices to any God other than the Lord must be destroyed. Two capital punishment just laid out there. That's it. Bestiality. Anyone who has sex with an animal is to be killed. And anyone who worships another God, because what could happen is that will be brought in to the, my people. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf, right? So that person was to be destroyed. Now, what's that mean to us before we get into this other nasty business? So we don't kill anybody in the church or outside of the church for those two things. The laws of the land govern those things. And inside the church, we have discipline, but there's no death penalty for anything. If somebody in the church is found worshiping Satan at home, although they're pretending to be a Christian, we don't grab them, bring them to the altar, all right, choir, you throw the first stones, and then we'll stone this person. We don't do that. We're not under the law. We're under grace. So remember that. There's no uh, occurrence in the New Testament of the New Testament church killing anybody for anything. Now, having sex with animals, bestiality, it was a crime guilty of capital punishment, as was homosexuality. Because we won't get to that too much in, in Exodus. Let's read it from Leviticus. Leviticus 20, verse 11. Uh, sorry, 13. If a man has sexual relations with a man, as one does with a woman, both of them have one done as what is detestable. They are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. Okay? If a man has sexual relations with a man or a woman with a woman. So God created man and women. They're different. Oh, pastor, you don't really believe that. Yeah, see, I believe the Bible. Why you be so judgmental? I'm not being judgmental. I'm reading the Bible. I don't make these things up. As Christians, we're captive to the Bible, all of the Bible. Well, the argument is made. That's just for the Old Testament. We'll get to that in a second. So remember now, what authority do you give the Bible? Does it rule all of our lives, Old and New Testament, rightly divided, or do we just pick and choose the verses we like? No, but if a guy or a girl is just made that way and wants to go that way, how can you say it's wrong? Because God said it's wrong. I didn't say anything's wrong. That's like saying this guy likes to murder. He just got it in him. He like, you know, he's killing cats at five years old. 
He, you know, he, and he murders some people. But look, that's just the way he's made. No, we go, no, you can't do that. Or they just steal. Or they just fornicate. You know, they're not married, but they just feel like, you know, I want to go to bed with everyone, uh, you know, I can get into bed with. I just made that way. And why would let these urges be in me if it wasn't legitimate? You get it? Now, this is a point of real contention today in the Christian church. So let's see what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6. We read this. Or do, do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. To the church, he writes, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, ooh, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. End of story. People who practice these things cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Can they do it and repent? And, and be forgiven. Well, listen, and that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So there it is listed in the New Testament. You can't practice these things and be approved by God, enter heaven, because it shows you don't know who God is you don't know who Christ is because he died on the cross and shed his blood for those sins like covetousness, stealing, adultery, fornication, murder, homosexual sin. He died for those sins. So you can't practice it. And this has become a real area of attack on the authority of the Bible and has invaded the church in the last 20 years. Like there are some churches now that won't even preach the Bible at that point because they're afraid people won't come back who live like that in their churches, and you mustn't lose members. My, how unkind, how unloving. That's, that's not at all found in the Bible. Jesus preached difficult things, and some would not follow him any longer. He didn't run after them and go, okay, guys, sorry, didn't mean that, got carried away. It is what it is. Truth is what it is. But this point of attack is, is, is amazing. So uh, years ago, I got a warning phone call that someone in our uh, church uh, was fairly new, got a call from a guy who said, listen, I know, listen, I don't know you and I'm not a Christian, but I've, this is the truth I'm telling you, but I, I, I believe you're sincere and I just want you to know, I know what your church preaches. You're being duped by this guy. You're being, this many, many years ago. You're being duped by this guy. What guy? This guy, because he's my boyfriend, and I told him, you shouldn't be going to church and pretending. I said, for real? So I called immediately to the person, and I said, I got such and such a cold phone call. And the guy got lit. He went off on me. He told me, step off. Who are you? And he went into another personality. Look, I've been this way since I was 12 years old, 14 years old, and don't you tell me, and don't you give me those law of Moses and all, and stoning, and we don't believe in that. I'm not Old Testament. In the New Testament, it's different. And I, I said, well, no, it's not. I let him talk. I said, but I just beg to differ it with you. It'd be better if you just came out and said you weren't a Christian. And live any way you want. It's America. You can live any way you want. But don't say you're a Christian. Yes, I am. I'm a practicing homosexual Christian. You can't be that. That's be like a practicing murderer, practicing thief, practicing anything. Not because of me, because this is what God's word says. So I read to him this from, uh, from Romans. For although they knew God, Paul is reviewing the history of mankind. They neither glorified him as God or gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of God, the immortal God, for images made to look like mortal human beings and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over 
in the sinful desires of their hearts, to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the created things rather than the creator. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Chapter 1, verse 26, even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men who also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another, men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for the error. Now, I'm going longer on this one today because I re really, we must be, we must handle this and be honest. Pastor Simbley, you can't read that today. You're a hater. I'm not a hater. We hate sin. We love the sinner. We've all sinned. No one's any different than anyone else. Christ died for all sin. But you need to make a decision today. Are you going to go by the Bible, old and new, new here? Are you going to believe that and practice it? Or are you going to form your own religion? If you form your own religion, I'm telling you today, by the authority of Jesus Christ, in the day of judgment, you will be in such a horrible place. I'm telling you that now I love you, but I'm not gonna deny God's word. I'm captive to God's word. If he didn't write those things, I wouldn't read them to you. So come on. We all come from horrible backgrounds. No one's better than another. But no matter where we've been, Jesus is able to lift us up and cleanse us and make us one of his own. Amen. <laughs>